Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to show you a drama, sci-fi, thriller film called Gattaca. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In the future, humans have perfected genetic sequencing and DNA manipulation. Parents now have the choice to edit their children's genes during insemination. Diseases can now be eliminated, as well as bad traits such as body odor, baldness, and undesirable physical characteristics can be removed. Lives are considerably longer and humans now enjoy the benefits of living a long and healthy life. These edited babies have become the norm and are classified as valid members of society. Even with this advancement, some humans are still conceived and born naturally. These natural born and naturally conceived people are treated as second class citizens and are derogatorily called fake births or god children and are classified as invalids. Jerome Morrow prepares to head to work as a mission navigator in Gattaca. It's noticeable that his morning routine is unlike any normal person's morning preparations. He begins by shaving as much excess hair as he can. After a shower, he gets into an incinerator and removes all the dead skin from his body before burning it. He takes a urine pack and conceals it around his thigh. He then takes a fake fingertip, filling it with blood stored in a fridge and places it on his own. At his desk, Jerome cleans his keyboard, using a small vacuum to remove any dead skin or hair. His boss, Director Joseph, approaches and tells Jerome he'll be a mission flight navigator on a flight to Saturn's moon, Titan. He also informs Jerome that he'll be undergoing a substance test soon. Joseph leaves and Jerome plants several dead skin particles from a container into his keyboard, and places a strand of hair on his comb. At the clinic, Jerome gives the doctor, Lamar, his urine sample. Lamar tests the urine and the result shows Jerome is a valid individual. Lamar mentions his son and tells Jerome to remind him to mention him another time. Irene Cassini, a colleague, approaches Jerome and congratulates him. The pair watch rockets launch into space, and Irene comments that it's only Jerome who watches the launches daily. Jerome then walks back to his desk but notices his colleagues gathering. Jerome thinks about how his selection as flight navigator had been guaranteed since his birth but reveals, through thought, that he isn't Jerome Morrow. In a flashback, Antonio and Marie Freeman conceive Vincent through a natural process. Marie gives birth to a healthy baby boy, but a nurse draws blood and runs it through a machine that can predict the possibility of future illnesses. Antonio listens as the nurse recites all the possible illnesses and medical conditions that the baby could suffer. This included myopia, heart disease, and a life expectancy close to 30 years. Antonio names the baby Vincent, and Marie cradles the infant in her arms. It's revealed that this baby, Vincent, is the one portraying Jerome. Determined to prevent the situation happening a second time, the couple decides to have a second baby but have its genes altered. A doctor explains that their next baby would have no disposition to any inheritable disease. He also tells them that he took the liberty to remove any potentially prejudicial conditions such as baldness, alcoholism, myopia, and obesity. Marie tells the doctor they only wanted the diseases removed and nothing else, but the doctor answers that they would want their child to have the best possible start in life, considering the amount of imperfection naturally built into humans. This is how Vincent's brother, Anton, came into the world. Even at their early years, the effect of gene manipulation is immediately noticeable. Anton is growing faster and stronger than Vincent even though he's younger. Vincent also notices his parents' liking for Anton. Vincent develops a small distaste of his brother. As a child, Vincent develops a liking for outer space, space travel, and dreams of becoming an astronaut. His parents try to discourage him, considering his underlying medical conditions. Antonio tells him that Vincent would only be allowed on a spaceship if he were to clean it. As a young man, Vincent realizes this soon enough as he's rejected at all of his screenings and job applications. The two boys, now older, compete with one another to see who could swim the farthest. Anton always wins but this time, Vincent felt something was going to change. Determined to beat his brother, Vincent overtakes Anton and leads the race. Finally, Anton becomes too exhausted and starts sinking. Vincent quickly comes to his brother's aid, rescuing him, and leading him back to shore. This, Vincent believes, was the single moment in their lives where Anton was not as strong as he believed, and Vincent was not as weak. Vincent then decides to leave his family once and for all. He begins work at Gattaca as a janitor. Vincent fantasizes of working in Gattaca, staring blankly at the workers coming in daily. He sits in one of the desks and pretends as if he were working as a navigator. Vincent continues studying and training, but he realizes he'll never get the chance to achieve his dreams because of his genes. Having no other choice, 
he gets in contact with a gentleman who offers his services in creating identities. Vincent gets the opportunity to become a valid individual. He is introduced to Jerome Morrow, a genetically superior man who suffered an accident and is now a paraplegic. Jerome has a high IQ, perfect vision, superior strength, and a long lifespan. Now being a paraplegic, Jerome would no longer have use for his superior DNA. A paraplegic weakling would no longer be accepted into society. Jerome is then reduced to selling his DNA and identity to continue living comfortably. Vincent would pose as Jerome in Gattaca, and he would give a portion of his salary to sustain Jerome. Vincent has to wear contact lenses both to see and to match his eye color with Jerome's. He then changes his hair cut and appearance, making it look as close to Jerome as possible. Finally, he gets surgery to lengthen his legs. Time soon came for Vincent to apply for Gattaca. He brings a sample of Jerome's urine and blood. As soon as it's confirmed that his genes are valid, he gets in. Each day, Vincent would have to dispose of loose skin, fingernails, and hair. He would then bring Jerome's urine, blood, and other DNA traces for the constant tests. While Jerome supplied the DNA, Vincent provided money. Snapping out of his flashback, he moves closer to his crowding colleagues and sees that a mission director has been beaten to death. Investigators swarm Gattaca, retrieving as much DNA trace as they could. Vincent has unknowingly left one of his eyelashes, and one of the investigators picks it up for testing. Vincent is worried he won't be able to launch for Titan because of the incident but Joseph assures him everything would still proceed as scheduled. Jerome is concerned that Vincent's DNA might get detected during the investigation but Vincent tells him not to worry. He speculates that he'd already be on his way to Titan by the time they find out about his fake identity. The pair then head out to celebrate. Back in Gattaca, Irene is suspicious of Vincent and looks through Vincent's desk for hair strands or dead skin that she can have tested. She finds Jerome's hair strand and takes it to a DNA processing station. She is relieved to see that the person she knows as Jerome, is valid. After a night out, Jerome and Vincent arrive home, and Vincent puts Jerome to bed. Jerome reveals that his accident was no accident at all. He had willingly stepped in front of a moving vehicle in an effort to end his life. He then tells Vincent that he's proud, and Vincent tells Jerome that he's drunk and should go to sleep. At a police laboratory, Vincent's invalid DNA pops up, and the primary investigator working on the case takes notice. The following day, the investigators are back at Gattaca, placing the eyelash owner as their primary suspect. They find out that the man, Vincent Freeman, worked at Gattaca as a janitor. The head investigator says that, according to the invalid's records, he should already be dead by that time. Not wanting to leave any stone unturned, he proposes they sift through entry logs, believing the killer could be working in Gattaca. Later on, Vincent meets with Irene. Irene then admits that she had procured his hair strand and had him tested and apologizes. She reveals to Vincent that, though her genes were engineered, she still had a high risk of heart failure, preventing her from joining any mission to space. She offers a hair strand in return but Vincent dismisses it, saying he doesn't need to have her tested to fully trust her. At home, Vincent tells Jerome that the police found his eyelash at the scene, and now, Vincent is a suspect. He's concerned that he'll get recognized and considers escaping. Jerome gets angry, telling Vincent he's being too paranoid. Jerome assures Vincent that he won't get recognized as they'll think it an impossibility that one of their own elites had been an invalid all this time. Later that evening, Vincent heads out with Irene on a date. In Gattaca, the head investigator orders the cops to have a look at the trash as there could be more evidence. He also orders checkpoints and routine checks around the city to filter any invalids posing as valids. After enjoying a lovely piano concert, Irene and Vincent drive down a highway before running into a checkpoint. The cops are checking the eyes, looking for contact lenses. Vincent discreetly removes his contacts but is rendered blind. They get through the checkpoint without arousing suspicion. Down the road, Irene tells Vincent she wants to show him something. She parks the car at the side of the road and crosses the street through a gauntlet of high-speed moving vehicles. Vincent follows but is having trouble seeing without his contact lenses. His vision is reduced to a blurry mess of lights and shapes, but with determination, he makes it across. The couple arrives at a solar farm, watching the sunrise. While romantically strolling down the farm, Irene notices Vincent's eyes looking different but dismisses it immediately. At the crime lab, the investigators get another confirmation of Vincent's DNA from a paper cup in the trash. They suspect that Vincent could be in disguise, working in Gattaca. The head investigator finds this improbable, because an invalid would fail to meet the mental capacity or the physical stamina required to work at Gattaca. The cops suggest drawing blood from every employee in Gattaca to better filter out the imposter. The next day, Vincent lines up to get his blood taken for testing. 
He enters a room and Lamar starts drawing blood. Luckily, Vincent came prepared with a vial of Jerome's blood. As Lamar injects him, Jerome flinches, as if in pain and gets up. He quickly swaps the vials and hands Lamar the vial with Jerome's blood. With the mass blood testing yielding no significant information, the investigators want to request another test but Joseph refuses, stating they've wasted too much time. With the launch in two days, he doesn't want more setbacks that could interfere with the schedule. The investigators have no choice but to leave. Irene and Vincent go on another date, this time at a fine dining restaurant. Vincent asks Irene to dance, and the two share an intimate moment. Vincent tells Irene that all he's ever wanted is to leave the planet. He finds it a comedic irony that, with the launch so close, he finally finds a reason to stay. In the middle of their moment, the police burst in and ask everyone to stay inside. Caught completely off guard, Vincent drags Irene outside, exiting through the back door. A cop tries to stop them but Vincent assaults him, pummeling his face, rendering him unconscious. He takes Irene and the pair find a hiding spot. The head investigator calls out to Vincent in the alley, looking more concerned and worried than determined. Irene asks who Vincent is. Vincent almost answers, but she tells him to keep quiet. Irene chooses to stay ignorant. She leans in closer, and the two kiss. The two spend a night together, and Vincent wakes up in Irene's bed. Worried he'll leave traces of DNA, Vincent heads to the shore and desperately scrubs himself clean with a rock. He goes back to Irene's house, and she notices his surgery scars. Vincent tells her that he got it from an accident, and Irene plays along. At the police headquarters, the head investigator examines a photo of Jerome and cross-references it with a picture of Vincent. The next day, the head investigator is at Vincent's desk, examining it for DNA. Joseph assures him that Vincent, he calls Jerome, is one of their best employees and has nothing to do with the murder. Irene sees this and warns Vincent. The detective catches up with Irene and brings her to see Jerome at home. Meanwhile, the cop examines the murder victim and retrieves saliva from the victim's eye. Seeing Irene and the detective leave, Vincent calls Jerome, telling him the investigator is on his way. Jerome then drags himself up the stairs, pulling himself up every step. As the doorbell rings, Jerome barely gets to the intercom. He gets to a chair and sits himself as the investigator and Irene enter. Irene sees the real Jerome, for the first time, and is incredibly confused but keeps her demeanor. Jerome and Irene act as if they've known each other, and the investigator suspects something is not what it seems. He takes Jerome's blood and runs it through his DNA reader. He proceeds down the stairs but suddenly gets a call from the cop that the suspect has been apprehended. The investigator rushes back up and leaves. Vincent appears behind Jerome and Irene is distraught to learn she's been lied to. Vincent chases after her but Irene distrusts him. Vincent finally admits to her that he's an invalid and tells her he has far exceeded his projected life expectancy. Vincent tells Irene that invalids are not just a reflection of their predicted outcome, but are much more. Irene gives Vincent a confused and shocked look, and leaves. At the precinct, the cop has apprehended Director Joseph. It's revealed that the victim was a big hindrance to the flight to Titan and wanted to cancel it. With the flight only happening once every 70 years, the director felt like he needed to do everything to ensure the flight stays on schedule. The suspect is caught and the case is closed but the investigator looks unsatisfied. That night, Vincent finds the investigator at his desk. Vincent confronts him and the investigator asks Vincent how he can't recognize him. The investigator reveals himself as Anton, Vincent's long-lost brother. He tells Vincent their parents died not knowing Vincent is still alive. Vincent becomes defensive, saying Anton is only after him because he can't accept that an invalid can have such a prestigious position. Anton expresses his concern about the amount of fraud Vincent has undergone. Anton asks Vincent to come with him, and to stop his illegal activities. Vincent raises his voice, saying Anton only wants to see him fail. Anton then challenges Vincent to another swimming contest. The brothers head to the stormy shore, strip down, and head into the water. They start swimming, getting farther and farther from land. Anton starts struggling and asks Vincent to stop. Vincent taunts him, and they continue. Anton asks Vincent how he's got so far with his life. Vincent answers he got this far because he never hesitated or doubted himself in whatever he does. Anton tries to swim back but starts drowning. Vincent comes in for the rescue and they swim back to shore. Vincent finds Irene and she guesses Vincent's eyesight was bad that night they tried to cross the street, but she appreciates him still crossing the street for her. Vincent gives her a strand of hair if she still wants to have him tested, but Irene lets it loose in the wind. At their house, Jerome tells Vincent that he's left enough genetic material for him when he returns. Vincent asks why he'd left so many and Jerome says that he might also be going on a trip of his own. 
Jerome thanks Vincent for sharing his life with him. Vincent may have gotten Jerome's body, but Jerome achieved Vincent's dream. Vincent gave Jerome a sense of fulfillment he couldn't attain before, and for that, he thanks him. Jerome hands him an envelope and Vincent leaves for the launch. At Gattaca, Lamar informs Vincent that a new policy has been put in place, asking the passengers to have their urine tested before the flight. Vincent didn't bring a pack of Jerome's urine and is left with no choice but to fill it with his own. Lamar runs the test and Vincent comes out as invalid. Lamar then tells Vincent about his son, who idolizes Vincent. His son wanted to apply for work in Gattaca but was rejected, deemed having an inferior gene. It's revealed that Lamar had known since the beginning that Vincent had a fake identity and kept it to himself. He sees Vincent as a living antithesis for those thinking invalids would never amount to anything. Lamar changes the result, marking Vincent as valid. Vincent then boards the spacecraft and waits for the launch procedure. Meanwhile, Jerome crawls into the incinerator and waits for the fire to ignite. As flames engulf him, he lays peacefully motionless. The rocket launches, beginning its flight to Titan. As the ship exits the atmosphere, Vincent opens the envelope and sees a lock of Jerome's hair. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.